Hey everyone, my name is Rui and we are here. This is going to be week number four of the APA Academy and we're up against Sir Jorge the Great and his San Antonio Eggies. Now, this is going to be a really interesting matchup. Um, He has a lot of checks to a lot of things that I wanted to do, but also he has some very scary mods. He has the Dracozol and the Cinderace combination, which together uh, are killing it in terms of KOs over um, the season. I'm sure they're going to be at the top of some stat leaderboards, but uh, they already have some crazy stats right now and I'm going to try to mitigate them as much as possible but also he has a G Max flapper which also means that this is going to be the first week of the AP Academy that we are not up against a G Max poison type which means uh it'll be the debut of G Max uh Grimmsnarl coming right now I'm so excited about it but here we go uh I'm going to screenshot the team as soon as I can so here we have Rabombi, Cinderace, Jelsint, Bronzong, Phalanx and uh, Flapple. Okay, so right off the bat, nope, no uh, Pilot Swine is actually pretty huge. No Pilot Swine and no Drake is old as well. Uh, no Frostlass is interesting. He did actually drop Dr uh, Frostlass, which I just saw in the transaction channel right before um, this match. Uh, it, it wouldn't be active until after this match, but I did think that was interesting. Um, no Subat, no Lipart is moderately interesting, but the big ones are no Drake is old and no um, Pilot Swine here. So, what do I want to do? What do I want to do? What would he want to lead off with? Me. Okay, so, no Rabombi. Yeah, okay, uh, Rabombi's going to be a little bit of an issue. So, what can I do here? What can I do here? What can I do here? Um, hmm. Rabombi's a little bit of an issue. I can just lead off with a Rotom. Rotom's going to be important for kind of managing the Cinderace, but Rhydon can do that somewhat. And Rotom is going to be able to defog, so it could be a little bit of, of a deterrent. He also doesn't have anything to soak up Volt Switches, so I'm thinking that's going to be a little bit of a saving grace here. Now, I have a really interesting Silvali. I have a Silvali Dark, um, which is kind of meant to take on kind of his slower bonds, like the um, like the Jellicent and the, and the Bronzong. But it, but it's, it's a really wonky set. I hope it does well. I, th I hope I can catch a few things off guard. It does lead off with the Flapple here. Um, that's super interesting to me. Now, one thing right off the bat, I really have to prevent. I can't just Will O Wisp. Is there any real downside to clicking Will O Wisp? I feel like there isn't. I'm just gonna do that. This is a max defense Rotom and. Um, so there are a few interesting interactions with this flap, all right? So first of all, I'm not sure if he expect he probably just expect me to lead off right on, right? That's the standard thing that people do, right? Um, so even at plus two, even at plus two, my scarfed Intellion can outspeed Flapple and straight up Oko with Ice Beam, and because there is no go does it go for the Dragon Dance right away? That's fine, that's fine. He can go for a second Dragon Dance, and I should be able to KO Flapple with with um ice beam but now that it is wisp I, I feel like he has no reason not to just want to not to just want to go for a second dragon dance but i really do want to gauge damage here because knowing getting some information onto this flapple would be pretty huge yes yeah, so he does go for the second dragon dance and now i'm gonna have to reveal that my that my Intellion is Scarfed, but ultimately, it's going to be fine. Okay, so that Volt Switch damage leads me to think that this is a really offensive Flapple, which it would be pretty fantastic for me because, again, my best answer to this thing is going to be hitting it with an Ice Beam on my... with my Intellion. Uh, yeah, there's no reason to want to click anything else. Um, it should 100% Oko, it should Oko 100% of the time, even through G-Max. Um, unless this thing is super bulky or Yachi, but obviously it can't be Yachi because, uh, every, all the Pokemon have to hold Pokeballs. Some form of Pokeball. He might be considering right now whether or not, um, I am Scarfed. He does go for the Gigantamax, which is really interesting to me. Uh, he might not realize that Scarfed outspeeds the Flapple, but, um, now I'm trying to think of what he would want to go for after this. He, he might want to 
just try to go oh he could go into bronzong for veer free rocks but honestly dealing with the with dealing with the Gigantamax flapple for absolutely free in this matchup which which really um protects my no it takes it wow that is a oh no it fainted okay i'm sorry it, um that HP bar looked like it had a little bit left in it. No, um, that is huge. I thought it was going to be a super defensive Flapple, but um, but this does give him very, very free rocks with with Bronzong. Now, I can defog them away later on in the match, but it's still not going to be the best for me here. Uh, but what I can do... I think it also gives him free webs with, with Rabombi. It gives him free something, whatever he wants to do. But it also very much frees up my Rhydon. Um... It does go into the Rabombi, okay. So, I'm curious, right? Because if Ice Beam is a two hit, then I would absolutely take that 100% of the time. I would take that 100% of the time. It is not. It is nowhere near a two hit, actually. Um, so I have to sw I have to hard it into something here. Uh, I can potentially. No, it's a, I mean, it's always, it's always going to be Rotom. And Rotom, honestly, is freed up a little bit. Rotom doesn't have to do a whole lot in this matchup. I don't think it does. Um, Rotom is kind of a backup check to, to, to Cinderace, but Rhydon should have it most of the time. And pretty much most of the matchups, it kind of does fine here. Especially, oh, double, pulls a double. Interesting, interesting. I wonder what he thought uh, I'm going to go into. Just go into the Jellicent. So, probably... I don't know. I don't know what he thought. Maybe, maybe he thought that I was going into Melmetal, but I don't think that was ever really going to be the play for me here. Um, but yeah, this is a very, very easy Volt Switch for me. Um, especially with no um, Ground Immunes. A remarkably easy Volt Switch for me here. And I'd be curious if this thing stays in. Um, honestly, I think this thing has to be max defensive for a few different reasons, but... Man, the fact that he didn't take a, a free webs opportunity is kind of wild to me, uh, to be perfectly honest. Because even if I did go into Melmetal, right, he got up webs, and and uh, he could have just gone into this right afterwards. Yeah, okay, so that, I'm pretty positive, just confirms to me that this is max physical defense. Because Volt Switch doing that much is a little bit wild to me. Where is my Rotom? Yeah. Um. Wow, how did Volt Switch... Was, was that a crit? How did Volt Switch do that much? Okay, I don't know. I'm gonna have to figure that out later, but... Oh, because it's a... Because this is Gigantamax. Okay, yeah, no. That's perfectly in, vi in line with, um... With a very... Um, hmm, what could this thing want to go for? What could this thing want to go for? I kind of want to go into my Sovali here. Sovali Dark uh, does seem really free, except that the Rabombi is going to be a pretty huge issue for me here. Um, but I'm really curious to know what this thing wants to go for. Just go for the Scald. I really don't want to get burned here. I pretty aggressively do not want to get burned here. No burn. Okay. I... I... There's really no drawback in click. Well, no, the drawback is that he's gonna that I'm gonna get Will O Wisp. I very clearly just clicked multi attack. I probably should have just clicked um, parting shot. Yeah, parting shot was 100% the better play. Um, but I don't know. Getting some type of damage onto the Rabombi. I mean, if anything, just breaking Rabombi Sash is pretty interesting to me. It's probably worth it just to do that. Does hard switch out into. Rabombi, and actually, this should be a two-hit KO. Oh, it goes into the Phalanx here. So, yeah, that's that's about in line with um, a standard Phalanx. This thing can no retreat here, but... But... Oh, and I can't... Oh, he probably expected me to Parting Shot. So if I did click Parting Shot, then uh, he would have gotten hecka Defiant Boost there. So I think I might have to burn my Intellion on this on this turn. But Yeah, because Intellion Scald e okay, I do have to get this one plus one special defense. But Huh. How do I handle this? 
How do I handle this? Um, how do I handle? I probably have to sack something here, right, to this phalanx. I might just have to hit this thing. I don't know. I'm gonna, I, I, I'm gonna try to go into Rotom. I almost ran out of time, but yeah, no, Rotom, Rotom is fine here. I think. Like I said, Rotom doesn't have to do a whole heck of a lot for me in this matchup, but it does have to potentially take some hits right now. It does have to potentially... goes for a straight-up close combat, so this leads me to think that it would be Scarfed. Yeah, that is perfectly in line with with uh, Jolly damage. D jolly, like, no boosting damage. So that seems pretty likely to me right now. Uh, he probably doesn't want to take any more damage on this. I can't imagine him staying in here right now, especially when I can volt slow Volt Switch out into something that has a better matchup. Because without that, without going for an over-treat, um, I do have a lot of better matchups available to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's, that's, that's fair. That's fair. So, it does go out into the Cinderace. Probably thought that I was going to try to Will-O-Wisp. But, again... It would surprise me if that thing wasn't Scarfed, and it allows me to get a better matchup in this situation. So what I think I do here is I, is I try to um, get a better positioning here with a U-turn on my Scarfed Intellion. And I just try to take it from there. Because, again, this thing is weakened, or, or if it was ever... Um, if it was ever... Scarfed, then I... And yeah, as long as the Jelson is in the back, there's no chance that I just attack in, into this thing raw. Um, what this should allow me to do... What this should allow me to do... Oh, it's Rocky Helmet. Yeah, no, of course it is because I have the Melmetal. I have to be the Melmetal guy, so I have to attract every gosh dang bulky water with Rocky Helmet on it. I, I get it, I get it, I get it. I think, honestly... This might allow me... Oh no, my play is always... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, if there's damage or, or, or a KO in this situation, I kind of have to take it right now. I think there is too much potential for damage right now. Although, allowing in the Robombi would be problematic, but uh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm gonna pat myself on the back a little bit. I, I, th I think Silvali Dark was was a pretty solid bring on my part because uh, it does help with the Bronzong and the Jelson at the same time, which was the only real way that I could, um, which was the only real typing that handles both, and um, it deals with that Phalanx a little bit. The problem is I'm pretty convinced that the Phalanx is scarfed, and I can I can outspeed any regular Phalanx, but I don't outspeed. Uh, I don't outspeed Scar Phalanx, obviously. So it does look to be a 3 KO. And... Part of me thinks Scar... Just Sack... Um, just Sack right on here? The thing is that even if it does get up an Overtreat, I think... I think... Um... I think I can deal with it always with Grimmsnarl, especially now that it's really weakened. Especially now that it's really weakened. And... Yeah, I just have a general... The team that I brought just generally doesn't deal well with fighting types. Um, but yeah, I think I... I think I'm okay here. I think I'm okay here. But I really do need my Sovali around, so I can't really be, be messing around with a Scar Phalanx uh, right now. Um, but... Let me think here. Okay, Scar Phalanx does Shadow Ball KO from this range. It should, okay. Okay, I'm 100% going for it right now. Because, I, honestly, I really do need Intellion. Like, I genuinely need Intellion. I, I guess I don't really need it, but it helps out a ton in this matchup. It helps out a ton. 
and if and if I do end up baiting in the, the Jellicent, then that would be huge. That'd be ginormous, I think. Regardless, um I think this is okay. Like I'm not in a great spot, but I think I'm in, a, in an okay spot. This got into the bronze song. Interesting, interesting, interesting. But I can't just get off the Shadow Ball. I wonder what he expected me to do. That does very little damage. But I don't think that this Bronzon could do much damage to me in return. I don't know. I don't know how I want to play this because... I don't know how I want to play this because I really kind of need this thing. Yeah, I think I need this thing too much. I'm going to go into... Oh, I also lost my defog. That's what he was going. That that's what he was after. You yeah, know, that's a totally fair play. That's a totally, totally fair play. He knows I don't have any removal anymore, and that's well. I can potentially have removal on my, on my, Sovali, but I think he knows that. Um, goes for a reflect. Wow! 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 Okay. 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 Okay, okay. How do I want to do this? I do a flame charge sp specifically for the... For the... Rabombi. But... It's going to be tough. Well, not only specifically for the Rabombi, but... um, To give myself speed in order to kind of deal with this team better. But that... Reflect... It's pretty bad, actually. Because you can go into Phalanx, and he goes into the Cinderace. That's also pretty huge. That's also pretty huge. Yeah, that would have KO'd. That would have KO'd. But I believe Rhydon... I don't know. I'm going to have to try to rely on Rhydon a little bit. I don't think Rhydon... My instinct tells me that Rhydon gets two hitted by by Phalanx no matter what happens. So I think I think this is the only chance where Rhydon's gonna have um, an opportunity to either set up rocks or just threaten this thing in general. So does, does, does go for the high jump kick as he should. Um, that looks like a, that was a crit. Okay, okay, that's fair. I think your rocks would be pretty optimal. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna just try to get up the rocks here. Because I think with the Rocks chip, I think um, this gets brought home a lot easier with um, with my Intellion. I think it shores up a lot of calcs that I need shored up, and nets me KOs where I really need them to be. Let's bring in the Bronzong, which is interesting. So if I even if I had gone for Earthquake, it would have gotten nullified anyway. But now he probably thinks that he's safe in here with the Bronzong, and he probably and he might want to set up his own Rocks. But I can crunch here, and I'd be interested to know if this is a Light Clay Bronzong. Um, but at the same time, it's gonna run out of move slots. This, if, if anything, this thing could be dual, dual, um, dual screens. And if it is dual screens, then dual screens rocks gyro ball or gyro ball or heavy slam wouldn't even um, wouldn't even do a whole of a lot again against my. It is dual screens. It wouldn't even matter the most against my my G Max Grimmsnarl here. But what I think I should do is try to see how many turns... Oh, the Reflect wore off already. The Reflect wore off. Hmm. The Reflect wore off. I don't know. I think he's going to set up another Reflect, which does suck. It generally does, genuinely does suck. That was a crit, wasn't it? No, that was just n that was just non-reflect damage. That's wild. But he, yeah, he probably is like Clay. Or no, I think because he revealed like Clay, it would have shown on the um, on the on the info screen. But I can keep pumping crunches into this. Crunch was mainly so that um, I don't get just hard walled by. And I just probably get some rocks, which would be pretty bad. I don't get a favorable roll. I uh, but I do get a defense drop. Um, let's go for Steel Beam. That so that's definitely for the Melmetal, or no, for the for my Grim Snarl. 
That was definitely for my Grimmsnarl. But now, now what do I do? Um, my best choice is still is still this thing because yeah Rabombi is going to be an issue Rabombi is definitely going to be an issue but I think I can deal with that um hmm I, I pretty much don't two hit anything anymore without man I think I honestly just U-turn into Melmetal here I think I honestly just U-turn into Melmetal here, because if this thing wants to stay in and just set up webs, then Melmetal is going to have a decent enough time. Especially with everything being as weakened as it is right now. And I can start to try to make things happen, and then, um, as long as my Mel Mel as long as my Melmetal can stay in long enough to, to wear down the screens, then I have an opportunity to um, let my... Goes for a trick. So tricks on a choice band. He probably, th yeah, he might. Mm, I don't know. Wow. Okay, that. Okay, wow. Wow, wow, wow. Now I do have facade specifically for this reason, and I can go for it now. But that is insane to me. Now if he brings in either the phalanx. I know, he has no reason not to want to bring in Jellicent, I think. He has no reason not to want to bring in the Jellicent, but he could try to... Uh, no. Yeah, no. Jellicent's always the, the, the optimal play here. But... Huh. He also doesn't know that I have Toxic on this set, either. Which, again, is going to be valuable be, mo mainly because it does... It does allow me to to not only tr uh, t attempt to 1v1 this thing, but also it allows me to um, wear down the reflect. Now, now, the light screen's already gone, so that helps a ton with my with my uh, Inteleon, but not with my Sovali. My Sovali still needs some help getting there. And now, the next time that my... Well, no. I was going to say, the next time that my Savali's in, I can click Flame Charge pretty safely, but I can't really because I he can still try to will o -wisp me, which is not ideal. Now, I do have Darkest Lariat for this situation, but it's not going to do much um, other than burn turns, which I kind of do need to burn turns, so I think it's going to be fine. But... Ultimately... Oh, that still does some damage. Wow. That was a crit. Okay. Okay. That, that was a crit. Which is totally fair. Now he's going to get to Scald me. And he's going to get HP back with... With Strength Sap. But I don't think he wants to play this game for too, too much longer. Um, especially because it allows my Intellion to, to win in the endgame. But yeah, that Darkest Lariat crit was huge. And I am running out of time real fast. I have to make my plays quite a bit faster right now. But uh, I do have a decently fast Melmetal. I should, I guess I should have mentioned that too. But my Melmetal is pretty darn fast, specifically to kind of deal with, um, to kind of be able to outspeed and at least get hits off onto this uh, Jellison here. Uh, so I, I, I'd be curious to know if it goes back to full, but even if it does go back to full, oh, near full, um, Toxic isn't going to rack up a little bit, which does mean that I can bring in, well, no, uh, I still got some more turns to play here. Hmm. Does this mean I hard switch? No. I also have to make my ch my moves pretty quickly. Okay. Okay. Time isn't the worst. I kind of overreacted there. My time isn't the worst, but uh, both of our time is ticking down. And I really don't want this man to have a mount advantage on me towards the end game, but uh, I'm going to have to see how this goes here. My Grimmsnarl hasn't even touched the field, which is pretty huge, because my Grimmsnarl can essentially act as a as a backup delete button to either the Cinderace or the or the or the Phalanx, right? Um, is this a sack? Yeah, this yeah this is a sack because 
Um, this chip damage plus rocks is going to... It, it, it doesn't take out, but it allows in my my Intellion for pretty much free. And it pretty much... Oh, I, I don't get taken out. I mean, I guess that's mildly better. I don't even know if that's better or not. But... That honestly looks like it makes it easier for my Intellion to win in, in the end game, especially once I got rocks up. Now that that Rebombi is going to be taking um, uh, rocks damage as it comes back in, it's gonna. It looks like it's going to make it easier for my Intellion to kind of win in the end game, um, because I don't think the Rebombi can switch in anymore, and we might be getting to that point where Rebombi, where Rebombi, that is heavy duty boots. It might be getting to that point where it won't be. Oh man, Shadow Ball is a roll to take out my my for Shadow Ball to take out that that Intellion. But yeah, there is absolutely no drawback in going for Shadow Ball here. Uh, he doesn't have switches into this anymore, and every indication is that I can. Is that everything gets KO'd with Shadow Ball. Uh, the biggest problem would be the Jellicent. But... I guess we just have to see. This, this definitely invites in the Robombi, which is problematic. And if the Robombi does come in, then I don't know what I want to do, right? Like, do I risk... Yeah, he, he, he definitely thinks that Robombi is the answer here. Which it might be. But he let himself get chunked down to under 50, which this looks like a roll to a no bulk Rabombi. Do I have any options here? Man, I might just have to sack off. Okay, I really want to try to ensure a win. If I can ensure a win, then I feel like I have to in this situation. If I can ensure a win, I feel like I have to in this situation. So, I'm going to try to. I'm going to sack this thing off. It goes for a trick again. Um, I can flame charge here. I probably won't take a moon blast, but... Who knows? This thing might not even... Oh, no. This thing is... This thing is... Um, this thing is banded because it took... Because it took it from my... From my... Um, I think flame charge actually might have just won me the match here. This... It's locked in a... Yeah, because now, well, okay, everything changes if he burns, if he burns my, my Silvali, but this might have just brought it home too. So, okay, it would have definitely been a roll. It would have definitely been a roll for, for me to KO with Shadow Ball, but, I, again, I was very fearful that he had enough um, uh, special defense investment, or, yeah, special defense investment to, to potentially take a hit. Now, I, I did run some counts, and I believe this should KO... Max special defense or max physical defense J Jellison from this range. This this looks like range for me to KO. I don't know for sure. He might have something up his sleeve, but uh, this looks like I should KO. It does KO, and I believe Silvali has just brought it home with three KOs in the end game. That is bananas. Okay, okay. I I'm blown away. I n that did not go any way that I expected it to. My Grimstall did not even hit the field at all. But it looks like this silly ass Savali set somehow brought it home. Oh my god, and that's gonna be our first win of the season. We are one in three. We don't go 0 and four, thankfully. But um But hey, that was a dope ass Savali set, if I do say so myself. I I was pretty proud of that Savali, and uh it came through for me in the end. Savali is by a mile my KO leader right now because Savali's pretty much been the G Max layer. And it's been the Mon that's gotten, like, all of my KOs. So, I believe, actually, my Silvali is going to take over, go ahead of that Cinderace in, in terms of KO leader. Uh, just between the two of us. I don't think... I haven't even looked at the uh, league-wide stats. But that is going to finally be a win. I'm so proud of all the things that kind of went down there. Every bit of my prep helped. Like, even having a Toxic on my on my um, Banded Melmetal. Things like... Um, crunch on my ride on getting a pretty unfortunate crit but it's fine i i think all that, that really did was force out my my grim snarl but i think it would have gotten there in the end uh 
Scarf Centellion being able to put on the amount of pressure that I needed it to. I really like the team, even though I was very, very weak to Rabombi. But uh, he had a really heat Rabombi that I could not have expected, and it was bananas good. It was bananas good. But that's going to be it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll be back really, really soon with more weeks of the NCP, as well as more weeks of the AP Academy coming up really, really soon. And uh, the UBL playoffs will be coming up really, really soon as well. But with that, once again, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll be once again out.